today's video, I'm going to talk about a problem that people occasionally have that's easily avoided. And here's the problem. You have your blank, you've cut the profile, and you're going to cut an inner ring. You drill your hole at the proper angle, you feed your blade through, and you're all set to cut. But instead of getting a nice sound like this, you get a pop and your blank jumps and you have to quickly get it and angle it so that you stay on the line. Now this is not a major problem because usually it corrects itself pretty quickly. And when you sand out, you sand out that sort of ugly vertical gash. But it is a preventable and avoidable problem. So if you can avoid trouble, then why not? I'm going to show you what's involved with this, but it's easier to do so with the workbench. So come on over with me to the workbench and we'll talk about why this happens and how to prevent it from happening again. All right, here I am now back at my workbench and I'm going to tell you why your blank sometimes pops. There are only a limited number of things that can be causing the problem. Your table tilt may be off and that you can check by using an angle gauge to supplement the gauge underneath your saw table. It could be that your guide is off and that you can also check to make sure that that's accurate. And assuming that those two are accurate, you can dismiss those, those are out of the way. It's also possible that when you're drilling your hole, rather than holding the drill bit right up against your guide, you've moved it away a bit and that will give you a different angle. Or it may be that you're not drilling directly toward the center. Now on most patterns you have guidelines that are drawn and that makes it easy to aim toward the center. You put your guide perpendicular at 90 degrees to the line. You mark your hole with an awl. Always remember to mark the hole with an awl so that your drill bit doesn't slip. And then you drill your hole. But sometimes you may not want to use the guidelines because of sanding difficulties. On certain patterns that may have corners, that have lobes, you don't want to be in a position where you have to sand out a drill mark on an indentation where you can barely get your sander. You'll have enough problem getting it nice and smooth without that additional sanding. So you decide to move your hole, and actually you can make your entry hole anywhere on the blank. A broad area like this will be easier to sand on both sides of the ring. I drew a, a line here to show you what you need to do, which is to mark the point on the ring where you're going to drill your hole, aim it right toward the center, all patterns that have guidelines, and everything you do should have guidelines, gives you your center point. You take the ruler, connect the dots, and that gives you the line to aim toward. Now, when you drill your hole, using a piece of wood, the same thickness as your blank, so that you don't try to balance this, which is a guarantee for a problem, you set it up so that your angle guide is at right angles to this new line that you drew. You set the drill bit in place and then you just go ahead and drill through, pulling away the guide when you would otherwise bump into it. Most of the little drill bits only come in short lengths, so you're not going to be able to drill all the way through. I've tried using longer drill bits and I'm concerned about the deflection on a long bit. So this technique where you just drill and then pull this out of the way, keeping the same angle, seems to work well. Another tip you might keep in mind is if you're drilling into tough wood, you might want to do it in stages. Start and pull it out, go a little more and then pull it out before you go all the way through to prevent the drill bit from breaking. And it just occurred to me that if you have a lamination and your entry hole is on a tougher piece of wood, let's say you're using purple heart and mahogany, you're much better off drilling your entry hole into the mahogany than the purple heart. 
So move the hole over and give yourself an easier time of it. And if you follow these tips, I think you'll find that you'll have fewer rough starts and less sanding, which is what everybody wants. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you find it helpful. And be sure to check back periodically. I'll post tips from time to time. And if you think of anything that you'd like to see in a brief video, please let me know and I'll see what I can do about it. Thanks again and have fun making your bowls.